You all right, mate? Yeah, fine. Great. Get us a biscuit, Al. What's up with you? I'll see you your legs. Well, yeah, I can hear it. Oh, go on, then. It's your door. I'm having my breakfast. Hello! For God's sake, go to the door! <laughs> you're out. Well, While you're up, get us the biscuits, will you? Took your time, didn't you? Blimey, what happened to you? Bloke here reckons he's Tommy Watson. Looks more like one of the Muppets. Nah, looks more like Joe Bugner after a bad night. Very funny. Alan, just off now. When I get back, I don't want to find this place looking as hard bombs hit it. Give me a line, us, Mr. Humphreys. That is just what I'm afraid of. Well, hello. You ain't been nicking his bike again, have you, Tom? Nah, it's not fast enough for me. Too fast, you mean? Anyway, what happened? Three guesses. Not fast, more. Who else? What for? Brotherly love? <laughs> I'm with Michelle last night outside her door, and I've just come up for air. Suddenly, someone's grabbed me by the back of the neck and ran me face into the door. What'd you do? Not a lot. My brain was otherwise occupied at that moment. <laughs> Michelle steamed in, though. Yeah? Get in there, you, he said to her. Don't you order me about, she <laughs> shouting, mate. Who do you think you are? <laughs> so what were you doing? Me? Yeah. Huh, I'm choking to death. Luckily for me, her old man came out and broke it up. Yeah? What's he like? Well, he ain't very big, but he don't the sort of bloke you'd argue with. Ex-boxer. Saved by the bell, eh? Yeah. Passmore reckons there's another round to come. He says next time he sees me, he's gonna kill me. And if I'm with Michelle, it's gonna be even worse. Even worse? What can <laughs> I do? What? <laughs> when one finds oneself in those sort of situations, it's best to use one of two things. Your tongue. Or, if you can't sort your way out of it, your legs. I'm not the clappers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Big laugh. You don't have to put your life at risk every night. Not now that Addison's give you the elbow. <laughs> Who says she's given me the elbow? Well, she went off with Passmore. That night she was supposed to go to flicks with you, didn't she? Yeah, that was just a misunderstanding. Well, you may call it a misunderstanding. I call it being given the elbow. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, have you seen her since? Just mind your own business. All right, Tommy. <laughs> I'll see you down at pub dinner time, Al. Yeah. Well, what did I say wrong? Affairs of the art, Tommy, my son. You can leave a man very bruised around the soul. You've been listening to them Cliff Richard records again. <laughs> Do you mind? That's an original from someone who's been through it all. <laughs> Never mind Tucker's soul. Where Passmore is concerned, Affairs of the Art can lead to extensive bruising all over. Yeah, but you, you come out of me last Saturday. Why not this Saturday? You're still seeing Jenkins, aren't Why you? does it always have to be someone else? Why can't it be you that's the problem? Problem? We had a good time last Saturday, didn't we? Yeah. But we was on our own then. So? Whenever there's anyone else around, you have to do it, don't you? Do what? It's a big, tough act. You don't understand. Yes, I do. You don't perform like this when it's me and you, so why be nasty with everyone else? Oh, because I feel nasty about everyone else. But why? I don't know why. I just wish that you could always be like you are with me with other people. Yeah, well, I don't care about other people. Including me? <sighs> no. Not including. Uh, it's all right you seeing me like this, but, but not anyone else. It's no wonder they all think you're so mean and vicious. They? Who? I said who? Someone, anyone, it's not important. Who? It's none of your business. Don't give me all that crap, Alison. Let go of me! Ali, I'm sorry. Ali! So I hate Mr. Humphreys. I'd be so zigzag that way here. Haven't you learned to steer that bike properly yet? He's a comedian, isn't he? The price of pepper expects me to drive to work. Come on, he pays me. Oh, I am sorry. Good morning, man. All right, Al. Only I was expecting you around about 8 o'clock. Uh, 
Of course, then I didn't realise you'd actually be walking. That went him diving more like. Tom, we kept imagining bogeymen all over the place. He was definitely about. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, sorry we're late. That's all right. We can stand a bit of flexi time now and again. Flexi time? What's up with him? I'll tell you what's up with me, Tucker, my son. No, better still, I'll show you. Ain't another drawings job again, is it, Mr. Humphreys? No, Tommy. It's a bit of precision engineering this time. Ah, sight for sore eyes, eh, lads? This dump, beauty, Tommy, my son, is in the eye of the beholder. It's just a drafty church hall. Drafty? There's a false nine cow blowing through here. Music to my ears, Tucker. Music to my ears. Yes. If Diamond would riddle out his brain or something. This hall, Tommy, as you so perceptively observe, is a shade on the parky side. Organise a whist drive for the over 60s in here. The weather turns a bit nippy, you'd stand a good chance of losing half of them before the night was out. Hyperfermia. Hyperfermia? Yeah. What he means is they'd freeze to death. I oh, know what hyperfermia no, is. No, what he does mean is he has landed the contract to fit this place out with central eating. Central eating? Yeah. That's a big haul, Mr. Humphreys. Yeah, it certainly is. So what about the rooms leading off at them? Yeah, them and all. That's a lot of radiators, that, isn't it? Must be worth a few bob to you, then, this contract. Mustn't grumble. These radiators, <laughs> they've been delivered, are they? No, Tommy, um, we have to pick them up. That is where you come in. load it all up. Couldn't eating company have done it? Now then, I think we'll stack it all through here in this room for a start. Until I get me plans out and work out where it's all going to go. This contract, <laughs> how much is it worth to us? Ooh, I reckon a fiver. A fiver? Not bad, eh? He must have had Dinah right in. You're well satisfied with that, are you? That'll do. I should think so, a fiver. What's for easing to that? Well, it's more than 150 each. I'm off to get some fags, lads. Get stuck in. A fiver. Between the three of us. Alan! What is going on here? That pile of gear outside don't seem to have gone down very much. There's a good reason for that. Yes, I know. It is all out there and you are all in here sitting on your asses. What's a game? It's no game. You're telling me, son. Huh. I up your wages, and this is how you perform. Wages? Is that what you call them? Hang on a minute. Was my eyes and ears playing tricks on me a little while ago? I thought you seemed well pleased at the prospect of another fiver. Oh, we were. When we thought it meant a fiver each. Each? <laughs> You've got some style, Tucker. I've got to give you that. <laughs> each. Come on, get shifted. No. Well, if you don't want to work, boy, you know where the door is. It's all too easy for you to put it that way, isn't it? To shout about people not wanting to work. I want to work. I'm desperate to work. And I'm not going to let people take liberties with me. Liberties? Yeah, liberties. Trying to shame people into taking crap jobs or even crappier money. Which leaves them no better off than if they were still on the dole. You've been better off this past couple of weeks, haven't you? And haven't you had your money's worth these past couple of weeks? We better put up with the work getting dirtier and heavier. For what? And heavier? For what? A few bob slipped to us under the counter. Wages, as you call them. Oh, I can't give you any more money, you know that. Oh, yeah, put your dole money at risk. Oh, is that the reason? <laughs> Well, there's an easy answer to that, isn't there? Take us on full time. Yeah, all right, Tommy, yeah. No, why don't you take us on full time? I can't afford to, for a start. Besides, it'd raise all sorts of tax and national insurance headaches. So it's useful to you, this arrangement, is it? 
It's not all that much fun being an employer at times like this, you know. I know there's a lot of employers going out of business, Mr. Humphreys. I also know there's quite a few who take advantage of times like this. Meaning? Meaning I'm fed up with being told that I don't want to work by people who are just trying to take advantage of me. It's bad enough when a total stranger tries it on. Let alone someone you've known most your life. We're going to have to do something about him. I mean, it just gets silly otherwise. It's got that stage already, if you ask me. So what do you suggest? Well, we're not forced to have anything to do with him, are we? Yeah, but you said yourself we can't keep avoiding him. Yeah, but we don't have to work for him, do we? Work for him? What you on about? That little row we had back there? About extra pay with Alan's dad? I was talking about Passmore. I'll give it a rest, do. You're not entirely unconcerned, you know. He hates you as much as me. That's a strong word, Tommy, hey? He does. Michelle told me. It's an obsession with him. Yes, a lift. See you later. Only to the betting shop. Do you reckon I'll be able to buy a trust with this extra £1.50 a week? I thought you'd gone. You thought wrong, didn't you? Is he right? Am I taking advantage of you? Look, all Tucker wants is a fair day's wage for a fair day's work. It's the principle of the thing. If you think that, why don't you go with your mates? Because I decided to stay with my dad. I've never seen Tucker like that before. That's left me quite shook up. Oh, he gets like that now and again. Not often, though. Perhaps he thinks he had good reason, eh? Must have done. No, they don't like you, though. Cheers. In fact, he thinks you're rather a good bloke. <laughs> better and better. Think he'd come back? Dunno. Hey. What? I might be able to go a little bit stronger than that 150. I'm not made of money, you know. You should have a few bob on this one. We'll meet again. Yeah, and we have, haven't we? Eh? Hey? <laughs> it was a non runner. Oh, now there's one you should be interested in, look. Deathwish. Yeah, I would definitely have some money on that. I can't. I'm skinned. I'm going now, to... don't go tearing away. What we'll do is, we'll wipe the brains, and then we can all eat together, can't we? There's nothing on this ticket. What do you mean there's nothing on it? Look, it was a non-runner, so we get our stake money back. <sighs> this is yours, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Came under starter's orders. Oh, you didn't run, man. It doesn't matter. If a horse comes under starter's orders, you lose your stake money. Since when? <laughs> Look, I'm not arguing with you, son. It's rule 17. Look, they ain't my rules, OK? I want my money back. He does try it on, that manager, you know. His pull strokes on me like that before. Has it? Yeah, all the time. I knew it. Under order. That's it. Call the old Bill. Slide. The old Bill. Can't sort out Hey, what's your phone the old Bill you for? Right. Yeah, too right. Yeah, too right. You keep out of this. You come and make That's more money, money you've got now. Then get. Give us our money back. Right. You're barred, sir. Hey, you come round here. I'll give you barred. Yeah, come on. Come over here. 
Are you going now, or do I have you nicked? You have me nicked, and I'll burn this place down. With you in it. When I got there, he's gone. Yeah, when I was in the Manchester. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Did it? Did it? Yeah, well, of course you did. Hello, Reg. Hello, son. How's the bike? Going like a dream. <laughs> you must have done a good job on stripping her down, then. I did. Took hours up. Yeah, it would. It... Do you know, a similar thing happened to me during the war in Italy, biking in the river. Not that BSA you were talking about. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> that bike was never the same again, though. Wasn't it? No. <laughs> You're a bit early today. You must be short of things to do. I was either that or sit around alive with the dossers. Look, Red, when I said dossers, I won't mean... I know, you. son. I, I haven't quite got around to that yet. Still, I'm not above creeping in here for the company. <laughs> we kill a bit of time. I know what you mean. You do? Then that's a tragedy. Because it's the most valuable thing you've got sometimes. You kidding? I've got loads of it to spare. You don't know that. We none of us know how much time we got. And that's why it's a crime to see people of your age with no option but to waste it. Hanging around places like this. Yeah, but you're older than me. Your time's more valuable than mine. No. Because you're still at the age when you've got the will to do things. When anything seems possible. They got no right to take that away from you. What, high ridge? Got the soapbox out again? Yeah. Hello, Eddie. You still here? Last time I saw you, you said you got a job. Yeah, well, I jacked it in, didn't I? Got my line. See you, son. Yeah, see you, Reg. What a loser, eh? You think so? Yeah. Written all over him. I'll tell you, even if there was an economic boom on, blokes like Reg would still be in here. And you wouldn't? Oh, Lee, well, you can't compare me to him. He's finished. I'm just starting out. Well, from where I'm standing, it looks as though we're all in the same queue. Going nowhere, fast. To see that film on the telly last night, The Wild Geese. Wildlife, was it? No, 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 no. It was like Roger Moore and Richard Burton. What about mercenaries? Terrific. Tell you, I could do with some of that. Good dough, plenty of action. Only those with brain damage need a plot. Three years in the army, right? Let them train you up. Then crash bang, wallop, thanks very much, and all your services out to the highest bidder. Tell you what, though. I'll empty a magazine over this counter free of charge. Magazine of what? Hot air. Where's Alan? Hello, Tom. How's it going? Terrific, Eddie. Really terrific. Get me away from him. <laughs> He's driving me party. <laughs> right, what is it this week? Jungle warfare. I don't know. Something ought to be done about him. <laughs> Sounds safe to have him loose on the streets. There's no danger of him shooting off anything. Except his mouth. <laughs> it's all in his head. I don't know so much. Anyway, did you get your bet on? Nah. See the air on me ways. <laughs> he weren't a pretty sight. Not past more. You sure that's not all inside your head? He was there this time. Come wait with us while I sign on. Well, I would do, but freeze the crowd, innit? Right, Tucker. Hello, handsome. Thanks for meeting you here. Hey, you ain't signed on already, have you? Yeah, I don't have any trouble getting up in the morning. Right? I had to say it, Al. It was what we all felt. Come on. What did he say when we left? I bet he's put the bar up to me and Tommy. Ah, well, that's where you're wrong. Because as it happens, he wishes to reconvene or wage negotiations. No. Yeah. You mean he'll have us back there? Well, that's what he said. And there'll definitely be some extra money. Yeah. Don't get too excited now. He had a wallet transplant. Transplant? Amputation would be more in order. It's the only way you get out of his pocket. Your mother ever tell you not to leave the room when someone's talking to you? Don't stop. Just stay out of it, you. No, I can't see the sense in this. It's what harm could it do me seeing your sister? None, because you ain't seeing her no more. In fact, I'm going to make very sure all you see in the next few months are the four walls of an intensive care unit. Can't we talk about it? There's no point in talking about it. You won't listen to reason. Now, you, it's been more like your friend. Here. He listens to reason. 
I told him to stop seeing Alison Powell, and he did stop seeing Alison Powell. Now, he is a man of reason, but you... Whether Alison and me see each other or not has got so little to do with what you say, Passmore. It's you. You won't listen, will you? You come round my house every week, polluting the air. Your ass? Since when was it your ass? Look, just stay out of it. No, you keep out of it. Mind your own business for a change. I'll go out with who I like, where I like, and when I like. See you later. Yeah. Oh. You gonna hang around while I sign on? We'll wait outside. You wait outside. I'm standing here. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Anyway. See you later. I don't suppose we could change our signing on date. Why should we? For that head case. Because he is an head case. Oh, no. I wonder who could have done that. I wonder. How much a new set of lights going to cost you? All right. Well, I'm going to have to take it into account when I get down to pay talks with your old man. We're going to go back and work for his dad? Put it this way, son. I'm going to reopen negotiations. What can I do for you then, Tucker? We've come round to reopen negotiations. <laughs> negotiations, is it? No. <laughs> what Tucker means is, uh, we're sorry about yesterday, and we do want to help you. And Alan said you might reconsider your offer. <laughs> Possibly. Right. Well then, lads. Yesterday I offered you an extra 150 a week for this job, right? Yeah. Well, now, out of the kindness of my heart, and taking into account Tucker's principles, I'm prepared to up that to 250, and that is absolutely my final offer. What do you reckon, Tucker? Bearing in mind that I'm skint. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Humphreys. You're still offering us pocket money for a full day's work. I'm not arguing about it. You can take it or leave it. In that case, I'll leave it. Fine, fine. It's up to you. Our two lads of your age, aptitude and ability, feel they can turn down a good job and two and a half quid a week extra. Well, it beats me. It's a matter of principle. Slavery was abolished some time ago, I heard. Don't give me that. <laughs>